All right, we're looking at section 4-4 today using congruent triangles or this acronym here, CPCTC. I actually find it harder to say the acronym than I do what it actually means. I'm Mr. Polarski, and let's take a look at what it means. CPCTC stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Uh, in essence, if you can prove two triangles are congruent, then you can prove that their corresponding parts are congruent. Let's take a look at our first example here. Uh, what we have is the inner workings of an umbrella. And we're told that uh, SL, segment SL, is congruent to segment SR. So let's mark that. SL is congruent to segment SR, and that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. What we have to prove here is that angle 3, I'm going to mark our prove, what we have to prove in red, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. So to do that, uh, in essence, we have a triangle proof. We have to examine and look at the triangles involved. There's the triangle on the left, triangle SLC, and the triangle on the right, SRC. And uh, we have two, we have a pair of corresponding angles and a pair of corresponding sides congruent. We have to prove this pair of angles congruent. Well, we've seen this before in previous lessons on my YouTube channel and on my blog that two angle or two triangles when they share a side we can normally mark those sides congruent to to itself and it's going to be useful and when we do CS is congruent to CS that gives us side angle side in both triangles so let's first not to forget to write down this as our given and then the second statement we're going to make is that CS is congruent to CS, and that's because of the reflexive property. And now we have enough to, as I've already said, to say that uh, triangle SLC is congruent to triangle SRC. L doesn't look much like an L, it's an L. And that's because of side angle side. And now, using the little definition we just learned that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we can state that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And even though I use the acronym when I write it, I say a corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent and that ends that proof the next problem is related to the previous example now that we know that triangle SLC and triangle SRC are congruent and that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 and we established that CS is congruent to itself what other congruent statements can you make from the diagram well, we could say that angle CLS is congruent to angle CRS. So that's having all three pairs of corresponding sides or angles congruent. Uh, then we could say that CL is congruent to CR. And that's by the uh, CPCTC. And also we'd be able to establish that angle 5 is congruent to angle 6. And that would be the supplement's congruence theorem. Here we have a, another proof proving two triangles congruent. Uh, we're given that angle Q is congruent to angle R and that angle QPS that angle QPS is congruent to angle RSP 
we have to prove that SQ, this side over here, and we'll mark that in red, that SQ is congruent to PR. So we need to establish that the triangle on the top, triangle PQS, is congruent to triangle SRP. We already have two pairs of corresponding angles congruent, and we've seen this already many of times, that when two triangles share a side, we can mark that side congruent to itself in essence, because it plays as two sides, so that PS is congruent to segment PS. And that's because of the reflexive property. And that's enough to establish that the two triangles, the triangle PQS, is congruent to triangle SRP. And this time that would be by angle angle side because it's not the included side. Now that we have the triangles congruent, we can establish that segment SQ is congruent to segment PR and that would be because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. 